morning uh welcome to this linkedin live if you're joining us um live or if you're joining us later on and rewinding and catching this up in the, the future i hope the future has been kind to you uh who knows what's going to happen um so i'm joined by the lovely meg fenn who i'm going to um in, hand over to in a second to to introduce herself um but the linkedin lives that we've been doing over the past few we did them every fortnight i think this is now number four uh we are looking at how to plan when it's impossible to plan uh here are always possible uh so i'm i'm I, I, my day job as is the chief executive always possible is to think about how we can support organizations to plan in different ways whether it's big um, public sector organizations or small entrepreneurs trying to get off the ground we are thinking all the time about how to help people um, clear the fog and see through the noise and and find you know how to put one foot in front of the other um, in the short term and the long term but with the pandemic uh, and everything else uh, brexit austerity and now global uh, gas prices i mean does it ever end meg uh we are finding planning pretty tough but uh, i've been joined by some brilliant experts um and, and good friends of mine who are helping to make sense of it all so um meg you're here today to talk with me about marketing and branding is that right because if not i've 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 got the wrong nose <laughs> yeah that's right richard <laughs> Um, so uh, there's not much you don't know about um, marketing, branding, and design, and I and I see that firsthand because you are responsible for so much of the always possible output in terms of our beautifully crafted reports and infographics, uh, the our design on our website and our social media. So um, you are the, the the genius engineer behind it all. But I know that you don't just work for us, and you've you've got a long and distinguished history. So tell us a little bit about your your kind of story and experience and what brought you into design and uh, brand marketing? Oh, gosh. OK. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. But yeah, sure. Uh, I'll try and keep it really, really brief. Um, you know, as I think, like, as a starting point, my my background in this type of profession uh, is in web and graphic design. Um, but before that, I also had some experience um, as as a teacher and traveling around um, to different places around the globe, which was was a huge or well, very enjoyable and also a huge learning experience. And I think I still pull a lot from those experiences into, into what I do um, now. And I guess over the years, I've been in business in you know one form or another. Gosh, since about 2003. So that's like, yeah, a long, long time. Um, and basically I help people, yeah, with the branding and with marketing. Um, but more specifically, I think what I've come to learn that I'm actually helping people with is to help them solve a problem, uh, and do that in a, in a creative way, um, that helps them to then, you know, kind of amplify their voice, their message and get their, their business and what they're what they do out there in front of the people that they want to be in in front of so mm. i guess that's kind of in a nutshell what what i do so i do um you know like a range of things but it, it's all either around kind of strategy marketing strategy in, in the form of consultation uh and workshops and things like that or it's um it could be hands-on stuff like you know I've, i learned uh, well, I was trained up uh, in a company before I started my first business uh, in a web design company. So I was trained up as a web designer. And so I do, I still do a lot of hands-on stuff as well. So yeah, it could be, you know, kind of looking at the big picture and then breaking things down and, and working out what kind of strategy and what kind of planning needs to be done. Um, and then on the other side, it could be actually implementing uh, that strategy uh, mm -hmm. through marketing activities. Well, I think I think having that balance and being able to connect the sort of bigger picture, thinking about you know what what messages are doing out there, you know how does communication work, what is the sort of latest thinking in this, as well as being able to, as you say, get your hands dirty, roll your sleeves up, actually you know play around with uh, with images and colours and palettes and, and 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 the stuff that you know actually is the nuts and bolts of 
of brand, um, visual branding anyway. Um, you know, th they're actually two, two slightly different mindsets, aren't they? I don't, I think there are a lot of people who are really good at one, but not necessarily the other. Um, so I think that's great what you, what you bring to it. Is, you know, it's a big question I'm going to ask first, I think, but is, is marketing harder? You know, it, it, it feels like at the moment, um, you know, we were already in the crescendo of social media, you know, really hitting its stride as a mass communication tool a few years ago. But now, uh, you know, I, I it feels like all channels are kind of competing with, with each other for space. There's always a new platform, you know, just, just in the last couple of years when TikTok arrived and then and Clubhouse. And, and now there's another, you know, there's just every month there's a new social media channel that's the next big thing and we all should be using Semaphore or, you know, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a new, you know, let's ditch that way of doing it, we'll do this way of doing it. It feels exhausting, Nick. So how does somebody who perhaps doesn't have the, the resources of a, of a huge marketing department even start to think about this you know um what, what where should they start what should they be thinking about first of all if they're going to get back to basics yeah that's a really big question and it's it's i think it's one that a lot of people are 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 wondering about as well and trying to kind of find uh the the, the right pathway for them i think you know one thing that you said about you know kind of all that there's so much out there that you could do and be on and you know kind of um utilize uh in terms of marketing channels or marketing activities um and i think one one way to start with that is to start with you know who are you trying to talk to who's your customer um and you know really kind of look at that and think of, think of, about that and it you know obviously it depends on where you're at with your business as well you know whether you're you know just starting out or whether you're a few years down the line or whether you're 10 years down the line um you know chances are your your customer may have um changed along with some of the other elements of your business as well so you're always wanting to you know go back to that and sort of review that um but yeah i think you know it's it's impossible you know you're going to it's impossible to say okay we're going to be on as a small business owner, you, you know, you cannot say, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be on every single channel. We're going to be on all these forums. We're going to take part in all of this. It's just impossible. You can't do that. So, you know, I think identifying what is going to um, allow your communication to get through to the right audience is going to be a, a good starting point. You know, just to give, uh, you know, an example, I guess if you're, uh, you know, your business to, if you're B2B, so if you're your business to business and your target market, um, you know, men and women aged, I don't know, 40 to 45 plus, you know, then maybe you might want to look at, um, you know, Twitter as, as a good channel to be on. Uh, you know, also if you're, you know, business to customer, so you're, you're reaching out to customers, to, to people, then maybe Facebook is the right place to be um facebook or instagram or both depending on your kind of target market age range you know that kind of thing um so yeah i think you know looking looking at your your customer looking at your audience um and also within that as well looking at you know your um potential collaborate collaborators um your your competitors as well like we you know what what are they on what are they doing um you know do you have similar a similar uh, audience a similar customer mm -hmm. base uh, you know you can really learn a lot by you know being part of a a business community i guess which brings me to the second sort of part of the my answer i guess to your question is to uh, you know don't try and do it all by yourself you know even if you are a solopreneur you can still find you know groups that you can be a part of that mm. offer you know kind of peer uh, peer to peer conversations and help and you know you can really sort of a build up your network but b get all that really really interest you know really good kind of rich um feedback um and help and suggestions and advice um because you know depending on you know wh whatever business you're in nine times out of ten there'll be someone who is a little bit ahead of you in in what you're doing and can offer mm -hmm. really really helpful insights um you know and and help you along the way and i think I think that's really important as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. Um, two questions, one from me uh, and one from Bonamy. Um, uh, and mine is about the marketing mix. So um, I know lots of our clients 
struggle a little bit to kind of get the balance right between content marketing so you know the sort of putting putting some ideas out into the world sharing learning being a an authority on their on their sector or you know writing up things that they think their audience might be interested in but harder to measure whether that leads to you know a direct sale or not versus here here's my product it's amazing it's shiny it's the best thing to the sliced bread buy it um there's still a lot of businesses that feel that the latter is is what marketing is because they can track whether people buy stuff or not when they put a message out but it seems to be the trend is a bit more around the former and actually it's about engaging people so i'm interested to know about from your perspective how you think people should try and think about that balance um and then a question from bonamy which is when people come to you with a problem to fix around marketing you know what, what tends to be the main problem that they come to you with you know what what's what's the thing you're hearing most in terms of a of a challenge okay so it's probably the same thing as your question actually in terms of bonomy's question i mean you know it's always um you know how can i um you know increase my my brand awareness my visibility and make those sales whether it's a service based business or whether it's um you know products <laughs> Mm, excuse me. And um, I think, you know, it's very much about what you were talking about, Richard, um, in your question. Um, and I think it depends on, I think it depends on a lot of things. I think it depends on the, the goals of the business. It depends on, um, you know, what the actual business does, how it helps, who it serves. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and yeah, I think, I think, sorry, I'm just, I'm just, th I think it's just such a huge, it's, it's such a huge um, problem. It is a massive, massive problem. I think, I guess the way to look at it is to really sort of try and break it down um, into, you know, what you can achieve sort of yeah. like by doing, you know, doing, looking at your strategy as a whole and looking at your planning and breaking it down and tackling things sort of almost one at a time, but with the overall picture in mind and trying to get towards that goal, whatever that, you know, whatever that goal is, whether it's to make that sale or whether it's to, um, you know, uh, sign a new client or to, you know, raise that awareness or to get the, you know, the incoming, uh, you know, um hits onto your website or whatever and i think it's interesting that bonnaby's asked this actually because i think a lot of this um a lot of the ways that you can help um you know achieve this is by utilizing your stats and looking at the data and looking at you know where where you know what's happening so if you're doing a lot of content marketing um you know is it is it working look at your analytics for example um you know if you're doing a lot of um you know kind of outreach on linkedin for example you know where's the conversion happening is the conversion happening um so i think mm, i don't know if i've answered any of the questions um at all whatsoever um but yeah, yeah absolutely um but 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 i think um you know, I think the challenge, why, why content marketing or, or slightly less direct marketing um, will feel harder is because, yeah, there isn't necessarily that data to underpin it in the same way. And people have got to find a voice. And I think that's a really tough thing, isn't it? For, you know, if, if actually you're just driven by getting these products off the shelf or, you know, we're a service provider, we're, you know, we're a hotel and we want people to come and stay because it's a nice place to stay. Being able to actually find a tone of voice and to be able to carry that through and that be part of your brand and you know you might have a number of people that are working on the social media account or putting together the copy for the website and so on um we hear a lot that you know having a consistent voice and being and, and owning that and, and and feeling really confident is is really important but i think that's that's hard isn't it for a lot of businesses it is hard because it's you know, it, it's hard, but it's totally achievable. And it, it really should be at the forefront as well. Um, you know, that's very, very recently, I was, uh, you know, talking to a business, uh, an e commerce business, actually. And, you know, we were talking about the disconnect between, um, 
you know, what they're all about and the passion and the energy they bring to their brand and their brand personality and their whole brand identity. But then when somebody engages through either the social media or their website, none of that brand story mm -hmm. is coming through. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so so what they're actually all about isn't being communicated. Um, and there's some really, really easy ways to do that. And that's basically just, you know, share your your mission, for example, uh, with your audience. And you can do that through your website. You can do that through your social media. You can do that through your newsletter. You can do that by, um, you know, through PR, um, by, you know, kind of even, you know, through content marketing, through writing, writing articles and things like that. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's building that brand story up and sharing that, uh, you know, through through your website and making sure that the the touch points that when people come to you, it's it's they're seeing that passion and that energy and yeah. the kind of purpose behind the business and what it's all about and what problems they're trying to solve is actually showing through um, through the brand. And 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 trying to do it succinctly, you know, it's about it's about being clear and you know something that people can can read in a couple of seconds and get the idea rather than, you know, I think a lot of people worry that they need to have huge amounts of copy and, and information, and very slick videos and, 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 you know, to be able to, to entice people through some very snazzy graph. You know, actually it's just about being honest, isn't it? And, and simple in that storytelling. Um, you and I both know that a brand is much more than just a logo and, and a yeah. name, but there are lots of businesses that, that will think, well, I can't, we can't build a brand without the budget of a big corporate or, or you know, or a big team. You're telling me here, rubbish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, I think, I think that is possibly one of the real benefits of, you know, the the kind of digital age that you can access help um, and you know, kind of like guides and templates and tools that will help you because you know, for most entrepreneurs and solopreneurs and, and business owners it's all there it's there it just needs to come out and it can come out through conversation it can come out through doing activities and exercises and um you know talking to other people you know if you're in a team you know talk to your team you know bring in different perspectives and different insights and really sort of flesh that out and that can actually be done you know the kind of bulk of that can actually be done in you know a day or maybe a couple of days and then from that you can put in place you know the the sort of strategy and the planning i guess the planning is kind of the big thing because you know when you know i'm actually coming you know i come to marketing from a sort of non-traditional marketing background i come at it from a a designer um you know sort of background and viewpoint and it's you know i just you know through experience and working with businesses um you know i just know that uh you know, marketing is one of those things that is is one of those words that people kind of think, oh, it's sales. Marketing is sales. Or, oh, you know, we don't know how to do marketing because mm -hmm. marketing is one of those words that nobody really understands, like, like what it is or how to do it. Um, but it really is, is it, it, it is achievable and manageable for small business owners to do that and to create a brand um you know themselves or with you know it could be that they they get a, a brand consultant um you know do a day's work with a brand consultant at the very beginning or something like that you know um but also saying that as well you know uh, you, you might have you might create your brand but you know don't kind of get stuck in thinking oh i've created this brand um but actually from the feedback and from the services and from the products that we're doing, we've realized that we need to pivot a little bit or change something. You know, that's totally fine as well. You can always go back and review and iterate and, yeah. and build on what your original, you know, kind of brand was. Brands are living, aren't they? And they, they, they need to be um, just, just as much as any other part of an organization. Um, uh, you, you'll probably have others to recommend as well, but I would really recommend anybody check out the writing of Dan Pink, particularly his book, To Sell as Human, which is all about, you know, rethinking marketing and sales as more about moving people from kind of one thought or position to another and actually how you engage people through language, compassion, uh, you know, vis visual clue. You know, there's a really interesting way he dissects marketing. Um, and also Seth Godin, 
who um who if anyone's not subscribed to his daily for, for kind of micro blog um some really interesting thoughts there i think on about how you how you build a kind of brand through not necessarily conventional means um you might have others to to recommend um well, I, th I think yeah those are great recommendations um i think for for kind of the implementation side the sort of hands-on stuff uh, i would definitely recommend um uh, Neil Patel and his blog um, and also like uh, HubSpot's quite good as well they have really good sort of um, blog posts and Shopify too so any yeah. of the kind of like for the sort of big tech companies they often have really helpful blogs um, as well as you know kind of individual um, thought leaders and, mm. and entrepreneurs too question from Dan um, what part do you think the growth of video is playing and getting messages and stories out there yeah huge i mean you know video is is really important um you know it's it's kind of taken over i guess um you know youtube is 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 one of the you know one of the main search engines um that, that people are using uh everybody you know a lot of businesses have realize that they do need to have video, whether it's um, like a promotional video or whether it's uh, a, an explainer video, for example, for a, you know, a tech product or, or something like that. Um, you know, video is, is here to stay. It's, it's, it's only gonna get, um, I think, more, more prevalent as well, you know, with, with, with phones and, and everything being sort of instantly, um, you know, people wanting to get their message out there and also people being being able to access video very, very easily. Um, yeah, definitely. I think people have to think about how it aligns though with with the other part of their voice. You know, if you've got if you have got a very high end, kind of very slick, minimalist <laughs> sort of look and feel and 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 your you know your site you know points to the one very expensive trendy lamp that you're selling or something but then your video is a load of rough and ready iphone selfies um <laughs> that, that, that are a bit scratchy you know that's going to feel a bit weird so i guess it's also about how people think about the kind of way they're putting that that video together for some that kind of slightly diy will be really really authentic and and and, and will help um you know sell sell something or, or promote something really effectively others should work just like they work with you as a designer and a brand consultant they should work with videographers and work with people who really understand how to frame and uh to put across images i think there's a danger and there's a lot of people go well i've got a camera therefore i'm a filmmaker um just like people do with did with photography for a long time it's not necessarily the same is it no i, I think that's right i think that's right um you know, it, it depends on on what you know what platform. Like, you know, yeah, for your website, your kind of you know uh, video that people see immediately. That you know, you've got to put some thought into that. It has to match your your brand uh, visually. It has to match you know your your uh, your mission, what you're all about. It's it's got to align really well with that. So it's worth putting some you know, it's definitely worth putting some time into it. Um, you know, if you're on uh, IGTV, then maybe that that's that lends itself better to the more sort of behind the scenes. I think uh, Instagram, isn't it, for, for those? Yeah, Instagram. Yeah. yeah. So it, you know, it, it's it, it you know you have to think about like okay, so where are we going to put this video content? Um, you know, how what is the purpose of it? Um, you know, and and then kind of choose. Okay, well we've got this set of video, these set of sets of videos, or we've got this um, plan to introduce a new product. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do that on Instagram, or we're going to do it on um, YouTube or, or wherever. Mm. Um, but then, you know, the, the website is kind of like the, you know, the place where you've got your more sort of slick professional mm -hmm. uh, video as well. Um, yeah, definitely. And I, and I guess you know, what underpins all of this, and this comes back to what you said at the start, is about you know knowing knowing your audience, knowing your customers, knowing putting yourself in their shoes. How are they going to be receiving this stuff? Is it in, is it of interest to them? How long are they likely to to watch or engage or listen? Who are they likely to share it with? Is it you know if they are of a particular demographic, or you know likely to to have a particular interest? 
how much is that being served by what you're putting out, whether it's video or anything else. Um, David has a good question here, which is around, again, that sort of user experience, you know, putting your self in the mind's eye of somebody who's coming to you maybe for the first time um, and he's talking about it in terms of websites now obviously that's that's where you've come from in terms of your professional background people talk about ux uh, for websites and i think for many years that's been seen as in the in the hands of the experts and I, it obviously still is but are there things that people who have maybe got a fairly you know low maintenance wordpress or, or or you know squarespace page or something like that um that what do they what do they need to be thinking about when it comes to user experience what maybe what basic tips or headline things can people be thinking about so that when people do come to their website they they're having a good experience rather than having to search really hard to find out what the hell it is to try and sell yeah yeah i think well first of all it, it's got to look really really nice it's going to be really really um attractive um, and you know, it, it has to look like, um, it has to look like it's going to answer the question, uh, of why somebody landed on, on, on the website. So whether it's, um, through, uh, a link on a social media post or whether it's through a search query, you know, whatever that page is that they end up on, whether it's the home page or a landing page that's specifically answering the question of, of uh, the social media post or whatever that click through, it's got to immediately kind of give an answer, I guess, um, and show that you're in the right place and to be very clear what it is that, um, you know, the website can help them do or you know it could be a product for example so yeah it's got to be very very clear i think immediately um to people and that can be achieved through the the design it can be achieved through uh, deciding what information is displayed immediately um and that goes for like the kind of menu bar as well um you know are you are you going to go down the kind of minimalist route and have like sort of one, you know, kind of value proposition there that, uh, you know, answers things immediately? Um, you know, if it's a landing page, then it's got to uh, visually be consistent to whatever the source was. So whether it was a it was a uh, from a newsletter click through or through, from a social media. Um, and then, yeah, I, th I think that's that's really what it comes down to is just making sure that it's very clear. Um, so through design, through deciding what information um, is seen and then having that, um, you know, like what you want them to do next on there. So, you know, you know, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to call you? Do you want them to order, a, a, click on the product? Do you, do you want them to fill out a form? So, you know, have that kind of follow through as well um, in what you want them to do. And that sort of user experience then makes it um it makes it clear that they've landed in the right place it makes it clear what they offer it makes it clear what you want them to do next and then they're going to do that next thing um yeah. and then that will get you get you closer to that conversion that you're wanting from your website quick quick last thought or roundup um really valuable stuff everything that you're, you're talking about um but there's no way of sugar in the pill marketing is there's lots to do and there's lots to think about and there's lots to to get adv advice and help uh, on um where should if, if if somebody's overwhelmed by this and they just want to get started they've got to put a plan together what maybe two or three things should they think about first um i guess yeah uh think about um yeah think about think about what they can achieve what they want to achieve um in you know the next couple of weeks and focus on that um and yeah put put carve out some time i think time is a big issue for for business owners as well when it comes to marketing because there, there's always 101 things to do so yes yeah, just get carve out some time in your diary that's a really good first step actually is just to put that time down um and and yeah and then eventually that will turn into a habit a really good habit where you're working on your marketing and focusing on what you need to get done yeah. every single week at you know whatever point in time that you, you choose in your diary but yeah i think the, i think it's time that's yeah. like the first thing 
don't don't underestimate that it needs some time and thinking, even just a bit of space. Um, you could do worse than than tune into Meg's two minute creativity challenges uh, that he put together for for our uh, network and possibility club every couple of weeks. And they're fantastic inspiration of using kind of design to get into thinking about voice and brand and creativity. Um, we're out of time, sadly. It always goes so quickly, but uh, you can um, find out more about how always possible might be able to help you. And that could absolutely mean working with Meg. Uh, Meg works with a lot of our clients on um, coming, overcoming brand and, and marketing challenges. So that's at alwayspossible.co.uk. Anything else you want to uh, mention or plug just before we, we wrap up, Meg? Um, no, I think just, yeah, definitely do as Richard says and check out the Possibility Club, the creativity challenges. I, I do a challenge and then I also do like an interview as well. Um, so at the moment I'm interviewing people I'm calling it a creativity Q&A where uh, I'll interview over, over Zoom and then it gets turned into a two minute um, video. So if you're up for that, you know, get in touch with me. Good. Thank you. Uh, always a pleasure, Meg. Thank you so much for your wisdom and yeah, time. Thank you for everybody for running over. Um, this is the last in this uh, series, um, but we will be back very, very soon with some different topics. Um, in the meantime, check out whatspossible.co.uk and have a good rest of your week. <laughs>